Vikai, Nava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi. There is a difference between Sadhu and son, Saint. To become Saint is very difficult. But to become Sadhu is relatively easy. Bhagavatam says, one who has devotional qualities can become Sadhu. Pitikshwa Karumika, Surya Sarva Devina, Ajat Shatrava Shanta Sadhava Sadhu Bhushana. One who has devotional qualities, he can be termed as a sadhu. How we develop such devotional qualities? By saintly association. It is all about what company we carry. Prabhupada used to joke that one man went to nature's call. In olden times they used to go to open ground to attend to the nature's call. And this person went to the ground and he did whatever he wanted to do. And he saw the stuff. <laughs> and he started to speak to the stuff. He said, such a nasty thing, such bad smell. I, I don't like you. And now stuff is saying, Yesterday we were gulab jamun, pav bhaji, chow mein. <laughs> and in your association we have become this. <laughs> so association matters. Whatever association we carry, we become like that. We all are receivers and contributors at the same time. Nobody can say that I am just the receiver in this world. That is big tragedy, if somebody is just receiving and not giving any. Nobody can say that I am just the contributor. That is the height of arrogance. So we all need others and others need us. This symbiotic relationship is making the life possible. Not only on the nature, but even among ourselves, we need that kind of symbiotic help. And that is what association is. But the problem is to live in that association is not that easy. Generally parents also know when there is only one child, it is relatively easy to take care of the child. When there are two, it becomes Mahabharata. <laughs> so talking about Mahabharata, we see Pandavas, they were so nicely connected to each other, they were always united. But they also had problems. One time Karna was fighting very ferociously. And he was about to kill Yudhishthir. Somehow Yudhishthir escaped and went to the camp. Now Arjun was supposed to defend Karna. But Arjun also followed Yudhishthir. And he just wanted to make sure that Yudhishthir is okay or not. So when Arjuna came to the camp, Yudhishthira became very happy that maybe Arjuna has killed Karna. So Yudhishthira was very happy and he was welcoming Arjuna that welcome you hero, you have killed our greatest enemy. This was I think 15th or 16th day of the battle. So Arjuna said, no, I didn't kill Karna. I was worried about you so I came here to see you. And suddenly Yudhishthira changed his mood. And he started to say that you are such a coward. You left the battlefield and you came here. You are not befitting to the Kshatriya family. And better, you should give up your Gandiva, your bow. And as soon as Yudhishthira said that, Arjuna came in big crisis, became ferocious. Because he took a vow that whoever will tell him to give up Gandiva bow, he will kill him. Now for Kshatriya, bow is everything. His bow is everything. So he said, that now I have to kill Yudhishthira. So he prepared himself to kill Yudhishthira. Just he was about to kill Yudhishthira. And who comes? Krishna. Krishna comes. Krishna said, what happened? Are you okay? Are you killing your brother Yudhishthira? He is the king. He said, he told me to give up Gandiva. What to do? I have to kill him. Otherwise, my, what will happen to my vow? Krishna said, okay. There are many ways to kill somebody. If you want to kill somebody, insult him. So Arjuna said, how can I insult my brother? So you are killing your brother, better you insult him. So Arjuna 
just started to insult whatever you jitne din ka bhara tha and then started to because of you when we went to the forest and you what the reason that dropati was inserted and you don't have any uh, you know cleverness and you don't have any vigor and you don't have any so many things arjuna said and then krishna said okay now enough you, know, you have taken your revenge and when krishna told that now arjun started to feel bad again how can i insult my brother i should kill myself the <laughs> krishna said okay there are many ways to kill yourself <laughs> better you started to glorify yourself praise yourself so that is the way you kill yourself so then arjun started to say yeah because of me actually pandavas are famous i went to the heaven and i conquered so many weapons and i am the greatest archer which is in in of in of that is also okay. so there are problems between pandavas also we again see when ashwatthama was captured and there was a big confusion what to do with ashwatthama like some were saying that to kill him some were saying that release him some were saying kill and release him <laughs> so what to do now bhima was very particular that no we should kill ashwatthama and yet draupadi was saying no no my sons died i can't let kripis feel the same sorrow of losing his son so don't kill now krishna had to take four arms stopping two arms was stopping bhima two arms was stopping draupadi and they both were right when there is confusion between right and right it becomes more difficult to decide and that's what happened then krishna gave the middle thing he said okay insult him take up his money release him that is as equal as killing a shatra so there were even problems within great devotees we are seeing krishna is counseling so nicely but within krishna's family also how yadavas died how they left this world nobody could kill yadavas they fought among themselves so it is not always easy to cooperate it is not always easy to get along with everyone it's very difficult even now families have become so small couple of people live together that also becomes so difficult and therefore there is a need to understand how to spiritualize our relationships we can't live without relationships especially in krishna consciousness we never learn to give up things that is not our process we to give up family give up job this is not our this is not at all our process our process is to do our duties nicely to please krishna this is our process in fact whole bhagavad gita is taught because of that reason krishna inspired arjun to do his duties nicely to live his relationships according to dharma and therefore spiritualizing relationships is very very important if we check most expensive cities in the world which one you will quote most expensive huh? tokyo 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 okay tokyo then anybody else london new york okay new york is the third one london no no first one third one is new york second one is tokyo first one is monaco most expensive but even expensive than that is to change somebody's mind <laughs> once they are off they are, they are gone you can't do anything therefore relationships are very tender things very tender some people say like famous doha rai mandare prem ke mat todo chatka hai is very instructive because once you get that crack very difficult to repair very difficult we can take this concept to the devotee community we can take this concept to the god brothers and god sisters we can take this concept to the families we can take this concept to the friends it's a very vast area to focus and therefore when we read scriptures we learn many instructive things how to spiritualize relationships and the first thing comes to accept 
If you want to spiritualize your relationships, first thing is learn accepting. Accepting what? Accepting people as they are. Because Krishna is accepting us as we are. Black color nobody likes. But who accepted black color? Krishna accepted black. When there is calculation according to the lunar uh, calculations, there are few days which are left and in every three years there is one month and the astrologers called it as Malamas, it's a waste month and the month started to cry, that why am I waste money? Krishna said, okay, you come to me, I'll give you the name, it's Pushottam month and it becomes most auspicious month to do any religious pious activities. So Krishna accepts us as we are. How many of you have seen Rajbo plate? Full Rajbo plate, at least in photograph. <coughs> Full Rajbo plate. What do you see there? How many items? 56, okay. Minimum of 25, okay. What type of items are they? Are they all sweet? Are they all sour? Are they all fried? So many varieties. Some are bitter, some are sour, some are pungent, some are juicy, some are sweet. And Krishna accepts everything. Suppose in one Rajbhog plate there is only karela. What will happen? Okay, okay, let us change. Only sweet. What will happen? Can we eat only sweet every day? Not possible. So everybody has been designed by Krishna in a unique way. They all have unique identity. And Krishna created them like that for his own enjoyment. So if you want to alter that identity, that means we are revolting against Krishna's creation. Therefore, first thing in spiritualizing relationship is we have to learn to accept as they are. I was sharing one example. We went to an house program and it was the marriage anniversary so I was just sharing one story at one time one husband and wife were fighting the husband said our son will become lawyer the mother will say no no he will become doctor lawyer doctor lawyer doctor you fought, fought such a heavy way he said okay let's go to court <laughs> and in court they hired lawyers and they presented their case and just said, okay, I heard both the parties, but first ask to your son what he wants to become. He said, exactly, that is the problem, he's not born yet. <laughs> so how to ask? Actually, we are having so many expectations. Why can't we accept people as they are? See, the whole purpose of this material world is Krishna even accepted our rebellious nature. We revolted against Krishna. No, no, we don't want to live with you. We had those rather dwesh and different feelings of revolt. And we, we told Krishna we want, don't want to live with you. And he accepted even that quality and he created this whole world. So this Srishti Leela is also part of Krishna's compassion. That he accepted us as we are. And he is giving us chance to reform. He is giving us chance to still connect to him. Is giving us chance to improve ourselves. So if Krishna can do that, if God can do that, why can't we do that? So that is the first quality. Second quality which we learn from scriptures is we have to develop the trust. We have to trust. Relationships can't go without trust. We are too quick in judging. Too quick. Especially it happens in new relationships. We are too quick in judgment. Like one person, one devotee was distributing books and he happened to meet one person on the street and he was just giving out the books and he asked, that, you know, would you like to take the book? And he said, yes, today is a very good day, I purchase your book. He said, what happened today? Today I released from prison after five years. This devotee said, okay, what happened? Why did you go to the prison? He said, five years back, I 
waved my hand to stop a taxi. And this taxi wala came. And this another person was running towards the taxi. He also stopped the same taxi. And as he was coming near me, I thought maybe he is coming to snatch my purse. So I took one stone and threw three on it. And his, he was completely bleeding. And that's how he ended up in jail. Later on I came to know he was also stopping taxi. So the thing is, sometimes our quick judgment may lead us in big, big problems. And same happens in, in relationships. Before there was no mobile phones, there was no social media. Now, you know, different people, they check phones and then they ruin their relationships and so many things. Even in devotee community it happens. Isne iska recording, voice usko khatam. Relationship khatam. Even people are fearful to speak. Who is recording me? They are recording me, but in general, <laughs> in general conversation, so fearful. But who will, you know, because people don't have trust. Everybody have call recorders in their phone. What does that symbolize? That means we don't trust anyone. I will record and I will present it as proof later on. This will ruin the relationships. We have to learn to trust others. And in our judgments, many times we break people irreversibly. Like somebody is very shy, we will be very quick to say, oh, he doesn't know anything. Somebody may be renunciate, you may say, okay, he's good for nothing, so he took renunciation. Somebody may be a good speaker, you say, oh, yeah, bookworm. We are so quick. And if somebody listens to all these comments, he says, okay, I'm not doing anything, he'll say, yeah, he's lazy. So we are so quick to pass our judgments that affects our relationships. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati shares a very nice story. There was a small boy in one village named Pancho. And this Pancho was roaming around in the village naked. The small children in the village, they generally just go around like that. Their clothes are ten directions. They just go around like that. And after 20 years, somebody came to the village and said, you know that Pancho, our boy from the village, he became high court judge. He said, not possible. He said, village is no, not for that naked Pancho. He can never become high court judge. He said, no, really, I saw him. He was judge. He was salary in the only one. But this is the answer. So they told that we are so quick to judge. Why can't we trust on people? They are also trying their best. And if we learn this thing from scriptures, how much trust was shown by Lord and His devotees to different people? When in Panchavati, in Chitrakut, sorry, in Chitrakut, Lord Sri Ramachandra was staying with Sita and Lakshman. Lakshman saw from tree that big army is approaching Chitrakut, and then he saw the flag of Bharat. And immediately judged that Ram Bharat is coming to attack on you. Let me go. I'll finish him. I'll finish the whole army. Ram said, wait. First see. Don't judge too quickly. It can ruin the relationship altogether. And we all know the story. Why Bharat came? He came to beg Ram to come back to the kingdom. So what level of trust and faith was shown? Even when Vibhishan came, to surrender himself and Ravana kicked him off. And he wanted to come and take shelter of Lord Ram. Flight ko landing nahi mili thi, wo chalo hawa mein khade thi. Or camp, when they came to the camp, the monkey stopped, the monkey stopped. First let us check. And the monkeys went to Lord Ramchandra and said, Vibhishan came, his brother of your enemy. Should we allow him to land? Should we allow him inside our camp? Ramchandra called all the monkeys and Jamban and everybody and asked their opinion. This all, all denied. Later on, on advice of Hanuman, Ramchandra called Vibhishan, brother of enemy. And first thing which Vibhishan comes in, Ramchandra addressed him as Lankapati. First thing, the level of trust which was shown by Lord Ram, Vibhishan got sold out to Lord Ramchandra. And Ramchandra did his Rajya Vishek even before fighting with Ravana. So monkeys were talking among themselves. 
that okay, our dear Lord Ram, you made Vibhishan as king of Lanka. Now suppose Ravan comes and surrender to you, what will happen? <laughs> Ramchandra said, yes, I will just do his Raja Vishek also of Ayodhya. He said, no, no, Ayodhya you have given to Bharat. What will happen? He said, I will give my Sakit Dham and spiritual life to Bharat. There is unlimited scope in a spiritual life. There is no need to judge people. We can trust them and give them space. This is also very important. Another important thing we learn is investing in relationships. Investment is necessary. Sometimes we think, okay, now this devotee is there for five years, he is not going Now let us focus on new people. It doesn't happen like that. We need constant investment in any relationship. One difficult question. Arrange marriage is better or love marriage is better? <laughs> Voting, let's vote. Arrange marriage. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Very few. Thank you. 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 How you continue the marriage? <laughs> Neither love marriage or arranged marriage. It depends how you continue the relationship. How you invest in the relationship. It's not about just how we came together, how we came to the devotee community, how we came to Krishna consciousness, but how we are continuing it. Therefore, selflessness is the integral part of any relationship. We have to be selfless. Therefore, Prabhupada used to say that the closest selfless relationship in the material world is of mother and child. There is completely selfless relationship. Mother is serving the child without any expectation. Some people say, Bade okay, seva kaya, it doesn't happen like that. Many sons, daughters, they are living abroad, parents are on their own anyway. But when they are caring for the children, right from the beginning, when the child is in the womb, from that time till raising him, that he becomes self-sufficient. It's just act of selfless love. And that's what makes that relationship so thick. We have to invest in the relationship continuously. We see so many, today also we were discussing this example in the afternoon. We all glorify Lakshman for his service. We all glorify Lakshman. That he sacrificed and he went to the forest and he served Lord Ram and served Sita and he didn't sleep and he didn't eat. But greater than Lakshman's sacrifice was one more person's sacrifice. Who was that? Urmila. Urmila's sacrifice. Urmila did greater sacrifice because she stayed back to take care of the family. She took that pain of separation from her husband for 14 years. That made Lakshman possible to serve Lord Ram. So that is very important. When we go along, we have to continuously think how we can help other person. It's not about just withdrawing, it's about investing. Otherwise, check will bounce. <laughs> and this is what happens when there is not enough investment in our relationship, in our devotee community. What happens is we try to withdraw too much and the check bounces. The person starts to give sparks. And then relationships break. So we have to learn to invest in the relationships. Until unless we will think that me, 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 and what happens? Like poles repel each other. When we are thinking me, the other person is thinking me, what will happen? They will repel. And therefore we see even in public places, restaurants, now people sit, like four people are sitting, they all have their cell phones in their hands. So just me conscious. When people take a group photo, whom we see generally. <laughs> Even when two people, three people they take photo, what you see generally? Dusre person ki aankh band hai ki uska kya ho raha hai doesn't matter. Apna photo bad badi aana chahiye. It's me consciousness. One time one one owner of the company got a very big car, very fancy car, and First day he came to the office, his employee was standing outside and he said, Wow sir, such a big car. 
He said, yes, I recently purchased. And if you work very hard, if you work over time, if you put your all heart, next year, what will happen? I will buy one more car. It's not about you, it's just about me. And when there is me consciousness, it will clash. Therefore, in Krishna consciousness, we learn giving. We learn to give. We learn to serve. Therefore, service is the integral part of any relationship. One time when husband and wife came to their counselor, they were devotees. And they came to the counselor and they asked that, you know, somehow, our children are not good. So, he said, okay, I'll give them both. And he said, okay, I'll give them two things. And he said, okay, I'll give them two things. Three months later, the counselor said, okay, what happened? You didn't tell. He said, okay, it's going to be a big deal. He said, you have told the techniques, you have told the steps, you have told the steps, so wonderful, so effective. We are so happy that I didn't tell you any techniques. I just told you do your own work, don't interfere, be selfless. This is the key point. Be selfless. Don't depend, don't expect too much. Even in devotee community, we start to expect so much and so quickly. We have not done so much for the movement, we have not done so much for Krishna consciousness and we start to expect so much. I remember my spiritual master was one time giving one discourse and one person asked one question. It was a little challenging question. And he said that, Guru Maharaj, I don't feel valued in devotee community. I don't feel valued. Nobody cares for me. And it was a Pandal lecture with 2,000, 3,000 devotees. <coughs> Guru Maharaj said, very important statement. He said, you become valuable by valuable service. It's not just about your spending some time in Krishna consciousness, you're just roaming around. It doesn't make you valuable. We become valuable by valuable service. How much service we are rendering, how much selfless we have become, how much pure we have become, that makes us valuable. That makes us endearing to everyone in the community. Therefore, in relationships, we have to continuously invest. And the last point, we have to learn forgiving. We are discussing last two mornings, the same point. How we have to learn to forgive? How long we will carry the grudges from different people? Everybody is suffering in this material world. We don't have to add to their sufferings. We have to help them. To learn to forgive because tomorrow you can be in the same situation, same mistake. I remember one devotee was shouting at another devotee because he is too attached to his parents and he was not serving properly and always visiting his home. And this devotee was shouting on him, you are too attached, you are materially bound, you have too much in clutches of Maya. After three years, that devotee had the same problem in his home and he had to go away from temple. So who knows, we will fall in the same thing. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam is full of these instances of forgiveness. We have been discussing for the last two days. The various devotees have forgiven and accepted people to encourage them in devotional service. And therefore, therefore we have to learn this quality. I am not uh, going in detail of forgiving because we are discussing for the last two days anyway. But in order to do all the above four points, one thing is very, very necessary. Any horizontal relationship, horizontal relationship means relationship between living entities, jiva and jiva, can never be successful without the vertical relationship with Krishna. If there is no Krishna element, in, in chemistry we used to read many constants, k factor, this factor, that factor. If there is no k factor, Krishna factor in the relationships, nothing can sustain. Because Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I am holding this universe. I am the sustainer. So if in relationship there is no Krishna, it will not sustain. It will be just selfish motives. You scratch my back, I scratch your back, and one time we are bored, and then we are gone from devotion service. So if you want to really stay, if you really want to excel in our relationships and devotee community, in our families, we have to learn to connect to Krishna. 
and we can connect to Krishna as simple as eating. You know, we all were eating, taking Krishna prasad. Somebody may say, I come, give prasad, and I go away. There is also service. There is also service. Every morning we sing, Chatur Vidhashri Bhavad Prasadho, Swatana Triptan, Hari Bhakta Sangha. Just by seeing devotees taking prasad, spiritual master becomes healthy. So we are even pleasing spiritual master just by eating. So if we are practicing Krishna consciousness, that Krishna element will help us to deepen our relationship. And I'll end this by reading the third purpose of ISKCON. Prabhupada drafted this purpose of ISKCON in the beginning days when there were no initiative devotees, handful of members and there were nobody to sign so they also got some guests and they wrote this whole document, Registered ISKCON Society. And the third purpose says to bring the members of society together with each other and nearer to Krishna and thus to develop the idea within the members and humanity at large that each soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of God. Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada Ki, Samaveta Bhakta Vinaya Ki, Nitai Gaur Primanande, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you Krishna Vishwal Prabhuji. So there is also this self care that is uh, propounded nowadays that we should take care of ourselves also. So where is the boundary that we draw that yeah this part is of that this part is for self care and yeah now this this can go for selflessness or how much to be balanced and how, how far do we go in selflessness? See as I started the talk, we can't be just a contributor receiver. We are both. So when you are taking care of others, that will help you to take care of yourself. And when you are taking care of yourself, that should be with motive of helping others. The propaganda of self-care nowadays, Vedic times there was no propaganda of self-care. Nowadays because people have become so dumb, they have to be told that Baba khud ka bhi dhyan rakh lo. Ye kaun se kata hai? You know, even animals know that, that we have to clean up, where we have to sit, where we have to drink. But nowadays people have become so dumb, you know, these gadgets have become so smart and people have become so dumb. Therefore they have to be told ki Baba self-care bhi karo. But the thing is, when we take care of others, that helps us. And when we take care of ourselves, we become enabled to help others. So that way we should see that thing. Even in devotee circles, we do nice sadhana so that we can serve nicely. And when we serve nicely, that inspires us to do our sadhana further. So like that. It's interconnected. Either way. with your husband when he fits in. <laughs> that we both will work and both will take care of home. You can refer to the symbiotic relationship concept. <laughs> Nowadays we have seen in foreign countries also when both husband and wife works, they, they share the household things also together. But the thing is, we have to know our nature also. You know, like men are created in certain way by God and women are Created in certain way by God. Like suppose we have to lift a heavy object, and a woman cannot lift that heavy object. That doesn't mean they are lower than men, because they are meant to do some things which men cannot do. 
so it's the way god has created things you know like this thing has certain purpose and a 1 kg weight which we used to weigh things has certain purpose now we can't say oh why we are not using this to weigh things that doesn't make you know people equal so we can completely understand this my this main question is that uh, my, my, my main question is that should i delay my marriage so that my material goes first get achieved and <laughs> <laughs> it depends on individual to individual but i mean delaying is never a solution if you want to pursue them further it's never a solution what if i don't get the rupees then how will i big question prabhupad could not solve this <laughs> <laughs> prabhupad said i want all my brahmacharis to remain brahmacharis <laughs> and all matadis to get married prabhupad said i could not solve this problem so anyway we have to change them eventually yes Hare Krishna uh, Prabhu ji my question is uh, when Draupadi Mata ji when she instructed that I want to kill you know what are you doing like all the I want to kill Ashwatthama and then when only she realizes no I don't want to kill him because I have so this change of mind why was why was it that Draupadi didn't have change of mind Bhima wanted to kill Okay, no, okay. Bhima wanted to kill, and Draupadi could see the agony which she was suffering. She said, "How can I give same pain to my Guru Mata, Kripi?" So that was the reason she said, "Don't kill." Mike. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Uh, my question is. Thank you for the wonderful class, um, Prabhu ji. We all, I mean, हम जितने बच्चे रह चुके हैं स्कॉन में, we are the product of previous blissful couples. So it comes with some benefits and some losses from my side. Benefit ये मिला कि हमें बहुत अच्छा environment मिला in childhood. But uh, what I feel कि इतना valuable thing को हम उतना value नहीं करते क्योंकि हमने बचपन से देखा है. So how to value that? क्योंकि मैंने Uh, I don't value it. Yeah, so I, I got your point. Guru Maharaj used to say, when you are young, go out and make mistakes, so that you can learn what your elders have taught. So therefore, some some freedom should be given to the teenagers that they go out, explore things, make mistakes, and then learn. It's important. Guru Maharaj used to say that because what happens? Too much care also spoils the thing. too much guarding like we used to have gurukuls and when students used to pass from gurukuls they don't know about anything of the world so everything is glittering around and they get captivated because they never saw anything first time they saw ice cream parlor they just you know go <laughs> it happens so we should have the balance if we are now we are grown up should go out and see take challenges Prabhupada always encouraged youth to take challenges, do something big. We are here, Guru Maharaj used to say, we are here to conquer the world. Our aims are not very small. ठीक है हम भी एक job करेंगे हम भी एक घर अच्छा बनाएंगे It's not our goal. Our goal is to conquer the world. In age of 24, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas and he was worshipped all over the world and he travelled all over India and preached Krishna consciousness. Adi Sankaracharya lived such as you know few years. But the thing is. what we are, we are having that responsibility in morning also we sharing with devotees prabhupa didn't leave a society behind he left a great responsibility and who will take this responsibility prabhupa said my third generation will take this krishna consciousness all over the world now which generation are you the third generation so this is our responsibility we have to take this movement ahead Like I was discussing with devotee, he was saying that Prabhu ji, I am planning to purchase one plane so that we can preach. I said, Prabhu ji, you have seen the budget? You have not. He said, No, it will happen. We have to plan. So there is nothing which is impossible. We have to just plan and go ahead. I, I always share this story. It's very inspiring. That Mayapur, Prabhu Pada is sitting with his sannyasi disciples, and big big sannyasis they were sitting with with their dandas. 
and one boy was running around with the globe in his hand and he said I want to meet Prabhupada the sannyasi said we are having some important discussions don't disturb us Prabhupada said no no let him come and this 17 year old boy comes and says Prabhupada show me a place where you don't have center I will go there and preach and Prabhupada said okay you select so Prabhupada revolved it and Prabhupada selected Africa and he said I make you the in charge of African preaching and this Brahmananda Swami will be your assistant <laughs> so Prabhupada wanted his youngsters to take this kind of responsibility so we should have such kind of goals that we go out try things make more devotees start new projects and fulfill Prabhupada's dream so we should have that as we should not live in our own area in our own cocoon no we have to go out that is what I expected from youngsters. Okay. Any other point? Hare Krishna. How to learn to forgive people? By practicing it. <laughs> it may take time. See, nothing happens overnight first we learn to forgive small small things then slowly we learn and see main thing is our senses are controlled by mind and mind should be controlled by intelligence which doesn't happen intelligence is not that powerful the mind overpowers the intelligence so we have to strengthen our intelligence how to strengthen our intelligence by reading scriptures by associating with saintly people by hearing such katha what happens this is not just uh, for some gathering or some you know just socializing no this purpose of sharing Krishna consciousness philosophy is to strengthen the intelligence when intelligence is strengthy is powerful what happens is it controls the mind and then mind directs the senses so suppose somebody did some mistake your intelligence will say no no forgive him give him chance our scriptures tell this then mind will say no 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 how badla lena badla no no my intelligence say no control don't do that so that's how we can slowly slowly overpower the demands of mind krishna tells in gita one who controlled his mind is best friend who could not control is the worst enemy but how to control that mind is by the power of intelligence and to strengthen intelligence we need regular sangha so these kind of sessions are important at your home you read Prabhupada books hear Prabhupada's lectures and different Acharya's lectures that will strengthen the intelligence and then we can follow these principles nicely Hare Krishna Mike is there Prabhuji as we uh, talked about selflessness sometimes people take our selflessness for granted so how to deal with that? We have to become selfless, not mindless. <laughs> like this is a small story Prabhupada used to share that there was one snake and whole village was fearful of the snake. So they were they prayed that please save us from the snake. So Narad Muni came there and he told the snake that everybody is fearful of you, you don't bite. And the snake listened to Narad Muni. After some time when Narad Muni came there, the snake was full in blood and so many wounds and children were putting them on neck and roaming around and all these kind of things were going. So Narad Muni said, what happened? Why are you in this condition? So the snake said, you told me not to bite. Narad Muni said, but I didn't tell you to, you know, you don't scare people. You can always scare people, you can make the zing sound. So it's not that we have to become mindless. You have to be intelligent. So somebody is taking benefit of you. You have to be. We can't be foolish. We can't be naive. We can be simple. So there is difference between simple and naive. So be simple, but don't be naive. Prabhupada was Prabhupada was going on one morning walk, and he said that, "What do you feel? Devotees are crooked or simple?" A devotees know when Prabhupada asks such questions, it's always a trick. Devotees say, Prabhupada, devotees are simple. Prabhupada say, are you sure? Devotees are crooked or simple? Devotees say, kuch to locha hai, isli double kuch hai. Say, Prabhupada, you only say, devotees are crooked. Look at me. 
I came to your country and you see using your resources and I am taking your help to preach the mission of my Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so it's not that we have to be naive, we have to be foolish. We can be intelligent, but that that thing also should come out of selflessness to help others. Transferred to a place where there is no ISKCON or we don't get any devotee association. In that case, like, what should we do? You have to create their ISKCON. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada sent his newly initiated disciples to different parts of the world to start the center. Just one couple, Michael and her wife, Mukund and Janaki, they told Prabhupada we will go and preach in San Francisco. And this couple goes there. And within few days, they open a center and they sponsor Prabhupada's flight. First time Prabhupada sits in flight and he goes to San Francisco. And when he lands on airport, there were so many youngsters to receive Prabhupada. Prabhupada was so pleased. And that's how Prabhupada got the idea. So I should send my disciples in different parts of the world. So he sent three couples to London. And there were some immigration rules that you should have certain amount of money in your bank to get the visa. So what they did, first one couple went and then they wired money back. And then second couple went, they wired money back and third couple went. And then three couples preached to George Harrison. And they created whole this wave of revolution, Hare Krishna revolution. People all over the world were chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And they started scorn in UK. So Prabhupada used to say, which my Guru Maharaj Big Big Sanyasi could not do, my new newly married couples did. So this is power of Srila Prabhupada. If there is no association, we can create some. Another thing, in the modern era now, technology has advanced so much, nobody can give any excuse. Everywhere you have access to lectures, Zoom, Sanghas, YouTube, so much, that any part of the world you will get association. Either physical or online, you will get association. So we can derive strength and wherever there is no devotees, we can create devotees. So that should be there. Any other point? Hare Krishna Prabhupada. I had a question. The difference between Mithyachari and controlling. Gita Krishna says, Mithyachari is one who is externally showing that he is controlling but internally contemplating on the sense objects. Like there were two monks walking and there was a pregnant lady and she needed help. So one monk took on her shoulders and helped her to cross the river. And this, both monks started to walk. And after a few kilometers, the other monk, he was so upset. He started to shout, How can you do that? How can you lift that lady and cross the river? His first one said, I just did that for a few seconds, but you are lifting that lady all the way long. <laughs> so that is Mithyachari. You know? That externally you are showing that I am controlling, but internally you are still contemplating on the sense objects. Therefore Krishna gives the perfect way of sense control. The perfect way of sense control is to get the higher taste. When we get the higher taste, automatically we give up the lower taste. Like, we take in prasadam also. When there is nicer item, we tend to fast. Okay, we will go to the program, so let us skip lunch today. So we do that, because we know there is higher taste. So let us skip the lower taste. So that is the best way. When we engage ourselves in Krishna consciousness, we learn chanting, we dance together, we do kirtans, we listen to the lectures, our all senses are so nicely nourished, that then these senses don't go around, hankering for sense objects. So that, that is the perfect way to control the senses. For girls, mainly I think it's about shopping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to understand, how do you understand? This Prabhupada story? said, especially for female, that when they decorate the deity, they have this lust of shopping. Prabhupada called that word lust. He said this lust of shopping will decrease. So especially girls should engage in decorating the temple decorating the deity, shopping for the temple. 
that way they engage their tendency to decorate to shop and then slowly slowly they get purified the more we decorate krishna the more we beautify krishna the more we become krishna conscious not me conscious so that is the way we should do that <laughs> yeah, it is very difficult to trust people in the today's world. But there are some near and dear ones whom we can trust. And slowly, slowly that trust will expand. Like even in devotee community, like once Prabhupada was asked that what will happen if whole world will become Krishna conscious? Prabhupada said then there will be no hippies. Then there will be no criminals. Then there will be no need of police. Because then devotees naturally will cooperate, will trust, will have those values in life. So if we really want to trust people, bring them to Krishna consciousness. Because that enables them to give up their exploitative nature. We came to material world because we wanted to exploit others. And that is the reason we can't trust anybody in this world. When they become devotee, they learn to serve others. So from exploitation to the level of service, that is the journey of a devotee. So at least some devotees whom we trust, we begin with them and slowly slowly that area will expand where the Sangha of devotees will gain more and more trust and then that Sangha will increase and it will fulfill the prediction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that every town and village, every person will chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare so Then this world will become Vaikuntha that is the way. <laughs> okay, so we we'll land here. Any other point? Okay, so we we'll land here. Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada Ki Samaveta Bhakta.